questions there. Well, welcome to the uh, May 20th regular city council meeting. I'm glad you're here. Now, let's face it, we get 360 days of sunlight. We have to throw in a day like today just to keep you grounded. You never know nowadays whether you need suntan lotion, a raincoat, or a snow shovel in Colorado in springtime. On the same day. On the same day, <laughs> that's right. So, um, let's go ahead and begin. Would you call the roll, please? Councilmember Cochran, here. Councilmember Gonzalez, absent. Councilmember Hamrick, here. Councilmember Jaquez, here. Councilmember Meisner, here. Councilmember Turner, here. Mayor Pro Tem Smith, absent. Mayor Troutman, here. No, no invocation? So please rise and we'll I pledge allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We, um, if you would like to talk to council, would you fill out a form there on the back there? Because we oftentimes will do the minutes for the meeting and we forget who wanted to talk to, who, who has spoken to council. We used to just do an open session, but uh, I'd like to change it a little bit because we forget who had talked to us and then it's in the minutes and we get all messed up. So if you would like to talk to council anytime, just fill out a blank f a form, bring it up to Cindy and I'll call your name. If it's an item that's going to be on the agenda, we'll wait until that item gets here. Uh, so, at any time, any council um, comments or events that you'd like to tell us about? Mr. Hamrick. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to say that this um, last week, uh, there were three council members that uh, went <laughs> around to various communities to look at uh, pools, aquatic centers, recreation centers, and a special district uh, that was created by a developer for a housing development in terms of the recreation center uh, pool that we're looking at here in Canyon City. It was very enlightening. We went to Woodland Park. They have an aquatic center only. Uh, it, was, it looked very interesting. The city sold bonds for that, I believe. Uh, and they did not have to raise taxes, but essentially they incurred debt that, that then had to be repaid through taxes. Um, and the pool up there, operating expenses were about a million dollars a year. Uh, and that's going to be, I think, just about any pool that you have will have those kind of operating expenses. Um, but it was totally enclosed. It did include uh, both lap swimming and exercise and a lazy river. Uh, and it was uh, looked look pretty interesting, but so that we'll, we'll bring that information back to council as a whole and uh, share that at the appropriate time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hammer. Anyone else? Then we have um, Mr. Meisner. Did you have a comment? We have vision committee. We have vision committee meeting Wednesday night here at four o'clock. Wednesday evening here, we'll be talking about uh, structures such as pole barns with our city building official, correct? And this morning, Mr. Hamrick and I attended the groundbreaking for Washington School in the rain. And we had umbrellas, so we were extraordinarily popular. There were areas that were for rent. No, just kidding. But uh, that's kind of exciting for our town. We're gonna have two new schools in a year and a half. And uh, that will cause more, I think, more notice for Canyon City. And, that's uh, that's a great thing for our town. And then I spoke this this morning for the seminar for this business revolution. Remember when they were in town, well, we won. Uh, we were number six in the nation. Uh, they get picked, but we welcomed over 125 business people. Right, Ryan? Right. For a sem all day seminar uh, for the business revolution, and I was very well attended because of that. So I thought it would be a small crowd, but it was. Large, larger the better, so. Okay, anything else? Let's move on. I have a proclamation, Law Enforcement Day. Uh, the torch run was this weekend, and uh, that was May 18th, and so we're a little bit behind on that. Uh, I, mean, I, I will read the proclamation, 
And Chief Harvey will step forward here with his socks. I'm not wearing my socks today. So You're not? No. I saw a pair of socks that had wings on either side. It didn't help. Didn't help. Okay, well. They were like the upside down. Were they? Oh, what's that? Okay. I'd like to read the proclamation. This is a proclamation uh, for Law Enforcement Torch Run Day. Whereas the city of Canyon City has annually supported the Colorado Special Olympics through participation in various fundraising events. And whereas the Law Enforcement Torch Run is a community event led by law enforcement to raise awareness and support for the mission of Special Olympics across the United States. And whereas the city of Canyon City and the Canyon City Police Department share the belief of Special Olympics that we can see achievement and self-worth realized by any individual. And whereas the city of Canyon City supports the mission of these organizations and within our community, caring for those with intellectual disabilities. And now whereas I, Preston Troutman, Mayor of Canyon City, Colorado, do hereby proclaim the third Saturday in May as Law Enforcement Torch Day in the city of Canyon City and urge all citizens to support Special Olympics goals of showing the community at large the true meaning of sport and pure joy towards life. So, Chief Harvey, would you like to expand on that? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the community, I just really want to say thank you to the Special Olympics uh, um, of Colorado for helping support our localized efforts here. We invited all law enforcement agencies in Fremont County and actually had some agencies in other counties that came to participate in our law enforcement torch run. And really, you know, I first started uh, getting involved with the law enforcement torch run in 2002, and I kept going back every year, and the only year I've missed was last year. This, uh, this year, I really wanted us to come back in full force because for me, the reason why I participated in the law enforcement torch run is that everybody in this community has value, everybody, and everybody has greatness inside of them. Sometimes it just takes someone else to help, help them see that in themselves. And so that was one small measure for me to really be able to uh, show my support for folks within the community that don't always feel valued. And so our law enforcement torch run, we had the Department of Corrections, we had Bureau of Prisons, um, uh, Custer County, the Colorado Department of Public Safety at, in Pueblo at uh, SimHip, I think is actually what it's called, Star Point, and um, we had well over 100 folks that actually registered to run, and this is our inaugural year uh, that we've actually done that. So very successful. Uh, it takes around $2,000 actually to send one Special Olympian to the state games. Those games are gonna be in Mesa County this year. And we raised, uh, with just this one event, $3,264.98. In previous years, uh, law enforcement torch runs in Fremont County only raised about 300 bucks. And I really attribute this success to our community partnerships. And so I'd like to invite a couple of folks up to uh, just kind of share with you their passion about this law enforcement torch run and why it's so special. Yeah. So Jane Gordon, the state coordinator, if you could come up. Thank you, Chief Harvey. Mr. Mayor and council members, thanks for having me today. My name is Jan Gordon. I'm the VP of the Law Enforcement Torch Run for Special Olympics. So I don't know if you know, but law enforcement, they're our largest grassroots fundraisers for Special Olympics, and that's worldwide. Um, but here in Colorado, uh, law enforcement raised a million dollars for our programs here in Colorado. We would not be able to support the 25,000 athletes that we have here, uh, as well as the 22 sports and the athlete leadership program, our healthy athlete program, our young athlete program. We have so many things we're doing for people with intellectual disabilities here in Colorado. And Starpoint um, can attest to that with um, some of their folks that they have there that are Special Olympic athletes that are involved. So I want to say thank you to Chief Harvey. Um, as he mentioned, we haven't had a lot going on up in the area and boy he took it on with a vengeance with his staff and with other law enforcement six other law enforcement five other law enforcement agencies up here that came together and the thing I think I love the most about this is that inclusion and acceptance is what Special Olympics is all about and I really saw that up here on Saturday um, with the different law enforcement agencies up here with Star Point with our athletes and their families it was just so fun to see everybody coming together for a bigger cause and uh, you should just be very proud of your people up here because I can't wait for next year and to have over 100 people is, is huge. We have 17 runs here during the month of May. We also do you know, other things like plane pull and polar plunge, lots of other events. But the torch run is our signature event, and um, they really knocked it out of the park. So thank you so much for supporting them in that, and we're looking forward already to next year. Thanks. Well, thank you. 
So I have just one other person, Mr. Mayor, if you indulge me, and that's uh, Mary Yang from Starpoint. Thank you, Mayor Troutman and City Council. Um, well, you know, I stand here today, and this has been one of the most exciting years for me. I've watched this grow. Um, back in, we started, um, Starpoint hadn't been engaged with uh, Special Olympics for about 19 years. Um, so this past fall, when we began bowling, we already have phenomenal bowlers, so we're like, why not start there? And we, um, we did start there, and we showed up at the regionals and the state meets, and we were the largest group. Um, uh, often, so we had a huge pres presence, and um, it was just phenomenal to watch these guys. They were so excited. Just the excitement has been phenomenal. Um, and then in that came just a natural partnership. It's been such a strong partnership um, with the law enforcement agencies. Such a natural, just a natural progression of support. Um, so that's been a really neat thing to be a part of. It's a true fine example of communities coming together to support each other. Um, and then we moved on to basketball this last season. And again, we were one of the largest groups at regionals. Um, we weren't the best group of the pack. <laughs> and when they, pa they paired it up, we were a little bit nervous because some of our guys had never even played basketball. Um, and instead of going to state, we invited law enforcement to come join us just for a local game here at the elementary school that we were practicing at. And to see how far these guys have come and to believe in themselves and the athletes that they've come has been just an incredible experience for sure. So um, this past Saturday after the torch run, um, I, I went home on cloud nine because it was one of the coolest things just to see all the agencies coming together, all of the athletes, and it just kind of really brought it home all of the wonderful stuff that's been happening. So um, we want to just continue with this. Um, our next journey is bocce ball. Um, most of us have never played that before, so it'll be a fun, exciting new experience. So um, like Chief said, you know, everybody has value, and this sure has um, lended that to our athletes. They are truly some of the guys that probably didn't say two words or, you know, were very quiet, are out there. Um, just cheering and yelling, and you're just hearing more boisterous, more personality. I've seen in a couple of individuals, so it truly has been a beautiful experience, and Saturday was phenomenal. So um, we just hope to continue to get that um, community support, and we're very happy that we found these partnerships. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the only other thing I'll say about that is I'm sure you can hear several folks out in the lobby that are very excited about being athletes this year. And uh, um, unfortunately, I'm not as athletic as I used to be because I pretty much couldn't walk for two days after the torch run. <laughs> but, um, you know, the, the thing that I remember from the torch run is that we had not only uh, uh, Starpoint clients or consumers that were really excited about what we're doing, but everybody who was there. And there were, there were families, officers, corrections officers who were all part of it and said, this is great. We want to do it again. Um, uh, Councilwoman Turner was there with us as well, and so she came out to support us. Thank you very much for being there, and uh, I just really feel like it was a very special event for our community and something that will continue, especially this being our inaugural year. So, Mayor, I appreciate the proclamation and uh, would love for us to be able to get some photographs with some of our athletes we're intending to send. Sure. Look, is that who's out? I, I want to go to their party. They sound like they had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> Much more than here. They but were very bring, excited. Bring Smiles them in. We can across absolutely the bring. Line. Let's come on up front here, and we'll right. stand back here and bring the group in. Yeah, and uh, uh, Jan Gordon has some shirts for each one of you for the Special oh. Olympics Torch Run. And one last person I really want to mention. She's new to our agency. Uh, she just came from uh, CBI. Her name is Billy Joe Serta, and she's our crime prevention person. She has really done a phenomenal job with this, and uh, she's, she, she is going to knock National Night Out out of the park. <laughs> she's been getting hives over it, but she's going to do it, and she's going to do a great Which, job with it. Where's she? Uh, come on up here, Bill. Come on up. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, thank you. Hi. Um, it's been quite an experience. I've learned a lot, and I've enjoyed working with these guys. Um, DOC and Starpoint have been phenomenal partners to work with, and I'm looking forward to next year. So well, thank you for doing this and allowing us to be part of, do something big for the community. Yeah. Welcome on board. Let's thank, have everybody. Thank you. Bring, thank you. Bring your group up here, and we'll get a group picture. Big smiles. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, just line up well, next to come up here. limited to the size of Carrie's camera. <laughs> Which is <laughs> concerning the group we had two weeks ago. No problem. Right? Oh my God. <laughs> oh, okay. That's really great. So I might still go with that party. They sound like they're having a great time. Okay. Mr. Yeah. Mayor? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Could we get the chief to come back in, please? I think he's double parked. That's yeah, okay. Chief Harvey, I had to ask, bring you back in because uh, I'm glad to see you guys try to start this again, okay? Early 70, 71, when I was stationed up in the Denver metro area, was when I first got involved with the torch run for the Special Olympics. We were running from Castle Rock to the Air Force Academy. Back then, they had one of the ceremonies at the Air Force Academy. And I was involved with running for the Special Olympic Torch Run for a good, I'm gonna say a good 15 years. And it, it, it made me feel proud to do something for these youths that we have in that. Uh, like you said, they're all important and everything. And all the miles in the sweat that we did, we used to run the leg from Canyon City to Pueblo. Me and one of my other co-parts we used to run the leg from Colorado City to Pueblo. And every mile that I ran made me feel proud as to why I was doing it. And maybe next year, if my health gets better, I'll join the crowd. So, so just to point out something, uh, Councilman Hawk has said he'd run from Pueblo to Canyon City. Just, to, I hope you all picked sure. up on that. Sure. <laughs> well, uh, that's when I was younger, and <laughs> I didn't have very much common sense, so, uh, so we, did, we did all that. So. We'd so love to have you. Thank you for bringing it back, and 
all the success for the whole program for these very special kids. Kids are always good and special in our hearts. Yep. But these ones here have another extra special place for us. So thank you. Thank yes. you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. OK. I'm, I'm really thrilled this evening because there are parts of our government that quietly do their business and do an outstanding job. And I was thrilled to be able to recognize that. And I'd like to read uh, what we'll be talking about here in a minute. We have the Fremont County District Court Dependency and Neglect System Reform Team with us this evening. The acronym for the program is commonly used as DANSR, D-A-N-S-R. They received the Excellent in Practice Award for the 2019 Convening on Children and Families. Excellent in Practice Award recognized teams that have demonstrated excellence in the field of child welfare. This dancer team was chosen for taking exemplary initiative in implementation of dancer goals to achieve positive system change through collaboratively working to have positive outcomes for the children and families in Fremont County. I'd like to ask Judge Allen to step forward and talk to us a little more about that. And, and thank you. Thank you all for being here. And um, Judge Allen. The Dependency and Neglect System-wide Reform Program uh, had its official start with an initiative from the Office of Juvenile Justice. And it represents a collaboration between the Colorado Judicial Branch Colorado Department of Human Services, Colorado Office of Respondent Parents Council, Colorado Office of the Child's Representatives. It was established to increase the capacity of the child welfare system and the dependency and neglect system to support better outcomes for children and families. Uh, and let no one tell you anything different. The, Official statistic is that 83% of our dependency and neglect cases involve substance abuse. I think in our experience in the last two years, we've had perhaps two cases that did not involve substance abuse. And co-occurring co mental health disorders. Research has shown that if you take principles from the Family Treatment Drug Court Program, uh, and the Fremont County team, by the way, won the award at the convening, the first ever award. I think it was called the Top of the Summit Award then. You don't recall? <laughs> and I was there too, and Mr. Larson and I suffer from uh, a lot of time in the salt, so to speak. Uh, but I wanted the team to get recognition, and I ask that they be nominated for this year's award. We were one of the original pilot counties, four counties in the state of Colorado in 2014. One of the reasons we were chosen to be a pilot county is because in 2012, we were a pilot county for the CQI project, Continuous Quality Improvement. And uh, some other jurisdictions that would go nameless had projects like uh, redoing one of their forms. Fremont County's uh, projects that they all completed was taking principles from the Family Treatment Court program and implementing it in every dependency and neglect case. Becoming a trauma-informed court and working on cross-system collaboration. So this team has been doing DANCER two years prior to implementation of DANCER. Now, other pilot counties have chosen to select a small portion of their cases. For example, uh, one jurisdiction just west of Denver that probably runs a couple of hundred cases a year has eight in the DANCER program. Denver, which has about 500 child welfare cases a year, has 10. From the very beginning, Fremont County chose every single dependency and neglect case that isn't in the Family Treatment Drug Court to be in the DANCER program. Under this system, families have better results in engaging in and completing drug and alcohol, mental health treatment. More children have remained in their homes rather than being removed in, 
placed into foster care. More children remain permanently in their homes and 98% of the children do not come back to the child welfare system within six months of completion of their case. You know, there's a rule they have at the state court system you need to develop, which is never let Larry have a microphone. <laughs> yeah, the team knows that. Cancer values are child and family centered, trauma informed practice, empowering and engaging local communities, state and local cross system partnerships, and matching services to client needs, accountability through professionalism and participation, quality of representation and advocacy by their attorneys, and delivery of effective services to families and having the courage to innovate and produce change. The original uh, counties, just to give you a, an idea of the growth, uh, was the first Jefferson County, the third district, Warfano, the 11th, Fremont, and Montezuma, the 22nd. In 2016, we added Denver, Prowers, Cheyenne, Kiowa, Baca, Arapahoe, and Boulder counties. In 2017, Pueblo joined. 2018, Clear Creek, Garfield, and Broomfield, and this year, El Paso County has, uh, has joined the program. I uh, originally asked some people who can't be here this evening due to other obligations, Stacy Quiddick russell Director of Fremont County Human Services, and Tanya Sutton, the supervisor who assists us, but there are many other people in the uh, child welfare system who are here this evening and they were a little upset when I didn't go up with them to get the award but there was a clear reason for that and that is because this is their award and this is to recognize this team for going above and beyond many of our attorneys uh, are here two days a week we have attorneys from Colorado Springs Fountain uh, Howard Salida we do have Mr. Larson from Canyon City. Um, his daughter, Catherine Larson, Fountain, uh, another county attorney, Ms. Bartell, Colorado Springs, Ms. Mazuka, Salida, Mr. Red Miles comes from Salida. So a typical Thursday for them is you get up about what time? I get up at 4 30. <laughs> okay. And what time do you get home? About seven. How many kids do you have at home? Two. This is just, I use her as the poster child because this is just an example of how this team goes above and beyond. They don't know what an eight to five job looks like. They're never gonna have one as long as they're on this team. And the support runs really deep. CASA, very important partnership, and Mika Davis is here with a number of of the CASA workers, they, they have untold value to children, families, in the court system, the success of our cases. Jackie Mitchell, one of the court judicial assistants who works with us. Uh, Mick Stump, social services, Carrie Porter, uh, Amanda Cohen, who can at times be bullheaded, but that's okay. The <laughs> participants say that lady has one of the biggest hearts they've ever seen how she can be so gruff at times and yet be so endeared to the children and families is something that escapes me because I don't find her endearing all the time, but then we've lived with this relationship for a long time. <laughs> and Starpoint on kind of a PRN basis when we have developmental issues with parents and children are also strong supporters. We have Jenny Gencheva here from Good Neighbor LLC, uh, mental health and strong focus on trauma treatment. All of these folks have trauma. All of these children have trauma. Rocky Mountain Behavioral Health wasn't able to get anyone here for us. They provide our substance abuse treatment, some uh, uh, treatment also in mental health. They're responsible for early assessment and early entry into treatment and delivery of services. They work very closely with us. And uh, it's just the hardest 
working group of people I've ever known, and it is a very humbling honor for me to uh, have asked for the recognition they got from the state and the recognition in their community. They, uh, they have made a difference in the lives of children and families in Fremont County, and they will continue to do so because their heart's in it, they're dedicated. Mr. Stone. Um, thank you, Mayor and City Council. Um, real quickly, I just wanted to show everyone, number one, the award that we received at the convening, which was a great honor, um, like Magistrate Allen said. One of the things that you'll notice uh, with, with our Magistrate is that he's pretty brutally honest, and we, we have to thank him for that um, because he's really, truly been our champion for, for this award and for the team, and so we want to thank you very much for that. Um, again, I, I can't say how much I appreciate when he talked about that when other counties were looking at uh, bringing out, you know, bringing out best protocols and, and with the dancer project of just doing um, a few families and his commitment that it would be malpractice not to uh, apply these principles to all families. And we have to thank him for that. So thank you. And thank you, Mayor and thank City you. Council. Anyone else? Um, Yes, please. W would you like to do a photo shoot, or is that possible? Yeah. Yes, no. Let's do it. One closing comment, about a third of the team is not here. Wow. They had other commitments. Wow. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Well, Judge Allen, I, I'd like to, uh, and from the beginning I talked about t dedicating a new school, we're talking about future generations, and you people that do this, thank you so much for the future generations that you're benefiting, that benefits us, but the future <laughs> children that must be uh, tough to see, but the help that you give them, but what you do, and you know you do this, you're helping a future generation. And I think that's just outstanding. And it's such a pleasure to do this. I, I jumped at the opportunity, and uh, I'm glad you came. I wanted sunny weather, but you know, the mayor doesn't always get everything. But again, sincerely, thank you so much for what you do. And you're that silent group that just keeps plugging away and doing outstanding things for our community. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to call another person up, which you're free to heckle at any time. Lisa, would you like to come forward and tell us what, you would, what you're going to be doing this summer for our community? Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good Lisa evening. Hyams, um, 3165 Grandview Avenue. I think I need to say that, don't I? Aren't I supposed to? Anyway, uh, thank you for letting me speak for a minute. I am extremely excited 
uh, to announce that the Canyon City Music and Blossom Festival will be hosting uh, music in the park again this year. Um, we've given it a new name for 29 years, I believe. Um, the chamber hosted entertainment in the park on Tuesday evenings. Um, the Canyon City Music and Blossom Festival is picking up uh, that tradition, and we are calling it uh, Blossoms in the Park, a summer concert series. It's going to be June, July, and August on the first and third Tuesday. If I'd gotten a little earlier start, we would have done every Tuesday, but I only had about two weeks to make this happen. Um, so I'm really excited. I've got my little phone here with everything, and I'll quickly make the announcements. The June 4th band um, is a great band that, unfortunately, I've got to reveal that after they give me the final OK. But you'll, you'll love them. They're fabulous. And then June 18th is the Geezers. Everyone likes a little, uh, a little oldies, a little 60s, a little 70s, a little rockin' tunes. Then on July 2nd, we have Tidal Breeze. It's a sextet. Sextuplet? Sextet? What's the correct word? Anyway, um, a jazz group. Uh, they do a beautiful job. They played for us at Blossom in the Park um, this last uh, couple of weeks ago, and they were fabulous. So we've booked them now for um, other, our summer concert series. And then on July 16th, we have Applewood. And for the love of Hank Holloway, um, it's just wonderful to have his group play again because he played every single year at Entertainment in the Park. Quite an icon. Um, then on August 6th, we have Lobo and Friends. Um, we're hoping Cheryl will be able to join him. We're still waiting for a final word on that, but everybody loves Lobo. And then on August 20th, we have Atomic Fireballs. So wow. um, I'm really excited about it. And um, we invite everyone in the community to come down again on every first and third Tuesday. We will be having two different food vendors in the park where people can grab dinner and sit in their lawn chairs and, and enjoy some wonderful music. So I invite everyone to attend, including all of our council members. And bring your, your chairs, your beach, chair, beach chairs, no. You your, need to bring your own chairs. Your own chairs. What yeah. time approximately yeah. do you start? It's going to be uh, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. 6 to 8. Okay. Okay. And thank Great. you so very much. Well, thank you, Lisa. Thanks for doing that. Glad thank you came. You. Okay. Totally lost my place. <laughs> uh, you're going to have the, that guy over there go oh, ahead. Oh, big guy. Okay. Um, Consent agenda. I would like then to uh, adopt, go for adoption of the consent agenda. And um, would you, Ryan, would you review that with us, please? Sure. Uh, 8A is declaration and disposal of surplus vehicle. 8B is authorizing the mayor to sign a water service contract for 1328 Grand Avenue. Uh, we're actually going to ask that you pull uh, 8C off of the agenda. Uh, so we have some more time to work on that one. 8D will award bid number 3219, a diagnostic scanner to diesel laptops in an amount not to exceed $6,995. <coughs> 8E uh, is the approval of the monthly budget summary. 8F, uh, receive and file the 2A independent accountant's report. And 8G is receive and file the list of bills. Okay, thank you. Is there any uh, questions of Mr. Stevens? Mr. Man, Ms. Cochran. Got my button in first. Um, <laughs> on A, the surplus vehicle that's going to be donated or replaced, I guess. Is it not working or is it, can we not have two? Do we not? <laughs> I'm just curious as to why, because it seems like it's got fairly low mileage. Uh. You know, I, I don't have a particular answer for that. Ms. Nordyke, would yeah, you like Tammy to? I think it, it's, what's up? Let's have Tammy. Tammy. Oh, Tammy. <laughs> Thank you. She's going to help you out there. So the police chief said that the vehicles that we are surplusing from the police department are not safe for the officers to use. And so that is why. So this is a street sweeper, though. Okay. On, well, I don't, I don't have that in, those in front of me. Okay. Um, but the. Street sweeper, I do know that we ended up um, 
replacing, didn't we end up replacing a street sweeper recently? And so when they <coughs> become older, it, co it starts costing us too much to maintain. And it isn't num normally the number of hours or the number of miles, it's number of hours on those. And so it just becomes cost prohibitive for us to repair. And that's the vehicle we're talking about, the street, the street sweeper? Yeah. Correct. Okay. So just, just to point out, Amanda, they, the, if you work eight hours a day for a full year, considering um, you know, vacation and things like that, you generally work about a little bit over 2,000 hours. So this 14,000 hours is, uh, is really quite a high number of hours for a vehicle. It's not so much the miles, it's the hours. Well, I was just curious because we had, at least I, I think everybody on council got the email that there was a complaint that the street sweeping was not happening frequently enough. So yes. that's why I was. And I, I don't know that it's necessarily a matter of number of vehicles, it's a matter of manpower. Okay. Okay, Mr. Meisner. But we still have two, right? Well, this is the second one that's going. No, so I we'll thought one. the one we bought replaced one of the two that we had. To my knowledge, you only had one. Only had one, I believe. Really? Yeah, we always, I've never known us to have more than one. Or one in a broken down one. Because they, street sweepers are terrible for that. Mr. Hamrick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, on the, on tab E, we have the monthly budget summary. Uh, and R Ryan, I have a request there. So we have the columns. We have current month actual, year to date actual. Uh, <coughs> rather than approved budget, which I think is a, a year to date, is that, is that what that column is, the third column, approved budget? Is that year to date approved budget? What I, I would. I think that's total. That's total that's budget. That's total. That's the total budget, right? For the yes. Year. Okay. So what I what uh, my suggestion is, rather than make that the, the total approved budget, make it month to date budget, so that we have year to date actual versus essentially year to date a budget. Does that make sense? No. Do you understand? <laughs> Okay, so we've got current month actual, year to date actual. The third column would be really neat if it was year to date budget. Would, could, would, would you like to address that, Ms. Nordyke? We do not adopt the budget by month. It is adopted annually. Um, a lot of line items are not spent equally throughout the year. And so saying that somebody should be you know, 25% spent in March when possibly all of those costs are paid in January, it would, it's gonna look like it's thrown over, over budget. And so it's just a normal practice to adopt it for the entire year, show the entire budget. So you can see where we're tracking. Um, I, we were, I think the percent is showing on there. Correct. And on there it tells <coughs> you that approximately 8% of the budget is spent each month. And so if you're looking right now for the March, through March, we should be approximately 24% spent if you were going to spend it equally throughout the year. Yes. And so I, I, anything higher than that, then you're trending a lot higher. But again, it's because of, you know, some expenses do just come in sooner in the year than later. I understand that, and that, and the percent budget reflects that, that there is a lot of movement depending on when capital dollars are spent, for instance, those, those types of issues, which is fine. Um, and, the, and the 36, the percentage, percentage of budget really kind of gives us that month to month look also, a month, a year to date look. Uh, but I just thought that that third column would be, rather than the total budget, might be better, might have better information for us. It was, you know, even if it's artificial, div divvied up between the 12 months. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Uh, Mr. Meisner, push your button. Are <laughs> your batteries? I look like Jeopardy here. 
Okay. Oh, okay. Now, Mr. Meisner. See, it worked. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, I would, I would uh, suggest that item F be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the discussion agenda as maybe 9A, whatever. I just, the importance of that particular item, I would like that to be a singly approved item by council and not part of a consent agenda, if council would agree. You would put that in your motion then? Is I'm assuming. Well, I'll be asking for a motion here in a minute, but as long as count, are you satisfied with comments? Hearing none, would someone like to make a motion? Mr. Meisner, push your button. No, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Mr. Mayor and Council, I move that we approve the consent agenda with the modification of removing item C, which I appreciate and removing item F. Item F would be moved to the discussion agenda as item 9A, and then the approval of the consent agenda. Okay. Second. Second, Ms. Turner, thank you. Any discussions on that motion? Hearing none, would you, would you call the roll, please? Councilmember Cochran? Aye. Councilmember Hamrick? Aye. Councilmember Haquez? Aye. Councilmember Meisner? Aye. Councilmember Turner? Aye. Unanimously carried. Thank you. Let's go into discussion uh, number nine. Consideration adoption by, uh, thank you, Tammy. Are you gonna, you'll be Thanks, hanging Tammy. around here? Yeah. Yeah, you should, you got a couple more. All right, thank you. I've answered all my own questions, so I'm done. Okay, consideration and adoption by title only of resolution number 15, series 2019, entitled a resolution of the City of Canyon City, Colorado, authorizing a transfer of budget, budgeted funds within the 2018 budget of the City of Canyon City, Colorado. Would uh, you or Ms. Nordak, Ryan, you or Ms. Nordak like to comment on that? Ms. Nordak, would you care to take that? As part of our, in preparation of our 2018 audit, we go through the budget and make sure that every line item is within the budget based on charter. What this resolution is doing is cleaning up that and bringing us into compliance. You will see that there's a couple items. Um, one of the items is in the streets improvement um, where it was a capital item and we were moving a few hundred thousand dollars. That was for our chip seal project. We budgeted under capital, but it's an O&M item. And so we also had to reclassify things just to make sure that when we were going for our audit and they were looking at our numbers, that everything was classified correctly. So you will see things like that as well. Okay. Thank you. Any questions of council? Uh, Thank you, Mr. Meisner. You may have answered this. But anytime I see a reduction in street surfacing or street work, I get a little frizzy around the ears. But we're reducing on, on page, exhibit A, page two, I believe, under uh, street projects. It looks like we have a reduction of $420,000, but then coming back to contract services, we have an increase of 420000 I assume that those are related to each other or are they not? They are related. And basically that is where we had items that were budgeted under capital, but they were truly an O&M item, such as our chipped sale project. And so when we're moving forward with the 2020 budget, we're actually going to start budgeting more of the items out of capital into O&M so we do not have so many of these transfers and cleanups throughout the year. And so that, that is a huge one in that department. So the work was still done. It was just for, it was chip seal and it's not really a capital project. Okay. Mr. Meister, go ahead. Uh, additionally, there's $60,300 that looks like was in sidewalk projects. I'm hoping that we didn't move that over to operating supplies, building materials. That again was some of the items that we had 
budgeted into a capital item and it's more of an O&M. We did go ahead and do sidewalks, but we did not um, capitalize the items. And so when the auditors are looking at items charged to a capital and then we don't capitalize it, they don't, they frown on that. And so we were just trying to make sure that we moved O&M to O&M. And that's basically what it was. We moved it from capital to O&M. You're saying O-E-M? O and M, um, operating, basically operating costs. Okay, and building materials. Yeah. I think, I think he's recalculating. <laughs> 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 no, you, I'm not. I'm, you're not. I think I'm. I think that's it. I think I thought there was more, but I couldn't find them. We're good, I think. Okay. Any questions of council? Could I have a motion and a second then, Mr. Hammer? Oh. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve resolution number 15, series of 2019, uh, concerning the transfer of budgeted funds within the 2018 budget. I believe that's 2019 budget, is that correct? Um, 2018 budget. 2018 budget of the City of Canyon City, Colorado. Okay. Second. Ms. Carter, second, thank you. Any discussions on that motion? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I think it was the, two nine, the 2019 budget. We're, we're, we can't be approving stuff for 2018. It is 2018, it is cleaning up our budget to match with our audited financial statements. Last year? Yes. Correct. Okay. <coughs> okay. Okay. Any, any more discussion on that, on that motion? Sir, would you call the roll, please? Councilmember Cochran? Aye. Councilmember Hamrick? Aye. Councilmember Hawkes? Aye. Councilmember Meisner? Aye. Councilmember Turner? Aye. Unanimously carried. Great, okay, thank you. Let's go on to have the 9A, which is the discussion that was pulled off the consent agenda, receive and file the 2A independent accountant's report. Would do you have a question, Mr. Meisner, or should I, Ms. Nordock, would you like to comment on that, or who wants to talk here? <laughs> I don't, by the way, so. Uh, I'll, I'll talk, I, yes. I, I just, the, the independent uh, auditors report or whatever you're gonna call this report was an explicit requirement of the 2A ballot. And I, I just hate to see such an important process be part of a consent agenda versus this council approving that specific report on a one for one basis. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Would you concur with that? I. That's fine. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, <laughs> well, I know what Mr. Meiser's talking about is it, it'll call it, it kind of banners it as, a, as a, it is an important item because that was a huge part of the deal with the 2A. And I appreciate that, Mr. Meiser. Thanks. Thank you. So, all right. Then I would ask for a motion and a second. That would be to approve the independent auditor's report. Ms. Tocker? Um, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the two-way independent accountant's report. Second. Second, Mr. Harris. Thank you. Any discussion on that motion? Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Meisner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Council. Uh, I still have a fundamental... I just don't believe fundamentally that the reports meet the intent of the ballot. I realize from a legal standpoint, we're probably meeting the verbiage of the ballot. I just don't think the information here from John Doe, when they look at it, they're gonna say, oh, okay, you spent all of your money where you were supposed to spend it. And that's it. Okay. Any other comments on? I just wanna clarify, that's not to suggest that I think that the funds were misappropriated in any form or fashion. It's just a matter of the report in terms of how do we make a report that communicates that to the public? It, there's absolutely no issue of trust in terms of how those funds were spent. But we have an obligation to those supporters of 2A to show them 
that all that money is going to be spent exactly what we said it was going to be. Mr. Hammer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd just like to point out that we did, we did receive um, as a handout a copy of the actual uh, ordinance language. And in the language it says, it talks about the tax rate of the 1%, which shall be used exclusively for street-related infrastructure improvements and repairs. Uh, and so the two charges to the auditors were to examine that, to make sure that there was exclusivity in the expenditure of these funds that were collected uh, by the two different rates, 2%, um, that was the non 2A uh, amount and the 1% that was the 2A amount. And that it, sometimes it's a little bit hard for the general public to understand, but basically the, the findings of the auditors that they found no exceptions with the statutory language essentially that, we, that, that the voters passed to establish this tax and to uh, govern its, it, that, that tax money expenditure. No exceptions, that means we did good. Thank you. Any more discussion on that motion? Thank you. Would you call the roll, please? Councilmember Cochran? Aye. Councilmember Hamrick? Aye. Councilmember Haquez? Aye. Councilmember Meisner? Nay. Councilmember Turner? Aye. Motion carried. Okay, thank you. Number 10, consideration of municipal code update, ordinance 13, series 2019, for a second reading and adoption by title only entitled, an ordinance for the city of Canyon City, Colorado, authorizing the sale of the city property located within the River Station subdivision exemption, Canyon City, Colorado. Would you care to comment, Mr. <coughs> Acting Administrator? Yeah, this is the second reading for the sale of the Santa Fe Depot at 401 Water Street, and uh, nothing has changed from the last time that we this came before council. Okay. Thank you. Any questions of our administrator? None. Would I have a, I entertain a motion and a second. Mr. Meisner, go ahead. Mr. Mayor and Council, I move that we approve Ordinance 10, Series 2019. Oh. Separate right one. Thirteen. You have your own agenda, eh? I, obviously. Mr. Mayor and Council, I move that we approve Ordinance 13, Series of 2019. Okay. Second. Second. Mr. Hamrick, thank you. Any discussion on that motion? Here we go. Would you call the roll, please? Councilmember Cochran. Aye. Councilmember Hamrick? Aye. Councilmember Hawkes? Aye. Councilmember Meisner? Aye. Councilmember Turner? Aye. Unanimously carried. Okay, let's move on to number 11. This again is a second reading. An adoption by title only of Ordinance 10, Series 2019, entitled An Ordinance of the City of Canyon City Appropriating Additional Sums of Money for the City's 2019 Budget. And could we have any comments from our city administrator? Okay. Uh, again, uh, no, no changes to this ordinance from the last time it was before <laughs> council. Uh, we apologize that it uh, did not come back sooner. Uh, should have came back uh, first meeting in May, I believe. Okay, thank you. Mr. Stevens, any uh, discussions, any questions of our administrator? Mr. Meisner? These are additional monies. These are... For the 19 budget, yes, we're going to increase that budget due to these incomes. That is correct. Mr. Mike, push your button. No, Mr. Meisner, go ahead. I'm just kidding you. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mayor, Council, I now have my act together. <laughs> <laughs> I move that we approve ordinance 10 to the uh, series of ordinance 10 of series 2019. Okay. Second. Second, Ms. Cocker, thank you. Any discussion on that motion? Very number to call the roll, please. Councilmember Cochran? Aye. Councilmember Hamrick? Aye. Councilmember Haquez? Aye. Councilmember Meisner? Aye. Councilmember Turner? Aye. Unanimously carried. Okay, thank you. Mr. Acting Administrator Stevens, do you have any report for us? 
I do. Uh, we <clears throat> May 11th, we had the Correctional Officer Appreciation Day. It was a very successful event uh, for uh, all the DOC and Bureau of Prisons uh, you know, showing recognition. I just want to thank a few folks. Um, you know, the Canyon City Elks came out and, and helped cook, and uh, you know, there were a lot of volunteers from the Elks. Uh, Catalyst Church provided the uh, bounce houses and obstacle course. Uh, Fired Up Pizza donated their time while they were there. And then city staff, uh, Jim Johnson, Denise Warren, Christy Gotham, Rex Brady, and the Parks Department. So appreciate everything that everybody did to uh, make that inaugural event a, a success. Uh, we also, um, you know, 2A water main projects, uh, those projects are, are starting to finish up on 4th Street. Uh, that should finish up uh, this week, and they will start on Myrtle after school is out next week. And then Main Street uh, at uh, 12th, uh, Main Street at 12th, uh, they'll start up again uh, that area after school is let out. Uh, the Via Ferretta up at the Royal Gorge Bridge uh, opens to the public on May 24th. And then uh, the, this past weekend, we had Zia Rides up at the Royal Gorge Bridge. That was a very successful event. We had over 200 reg registrants for that event, and it looks like they want to come back next year, so we're very wow. excited about that. That's great. Wow. Ms. Turner? <laughs> you, thank you. Uh, Ryan, thank you for bringing up the the correctional worker appreciation. I've had several people at work come and say thank you for what the city did there. So um, it was a really nice event. The band was really good. We had good weather. I think our timing was just impeccable there. We got lucky. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I really enjoyed it, and I know my coworkers did as well. So thank you to all of council for supporting well, thank that. Thank you for that. It was thank great. You. It was a great day. Uh, it went very smoothly. And I was very proud and glad that our city did that, to thank all those people that uh, were so good to our community. So it was great. Any other questions? Do, uh, do, do we have a count on that? <clears throat> we were at 365 or something like that. But do, do we know what the attendance number was? The attendance? No, I, I don't have an attendance number. I, I know how much food we bought, and we went through almost all of it. <laughs> so that's a good sign. Right. Yeah, that's a good sign. I think there was over five, about 500 had RSVP. Yeah, there were over 500 RSVPs, but I, I think we had more than 500 people show up. Yeah, it was quite quite full. Cool. Turned out very well. What a, what a great park! Uh, that is such a, a tremendous continuous asset for our community. There were people not only there for that event, but then all over the park as well. So it was just just a great location. Go ahead. My next question is in regards to Main Street. I know that, <clears throat> excuse me, on the, the 2A project a couple years ago, there was some verbiage in those contracts or agreements that stipulated the opening and closing of business entrances and what have you. Uh, I know we got to get Main Street done, but we also need to make sure that there's a strong effort to keep access to some of those businesses on Main Street. And, and I, what are we doing proactively there to make for sure that a, that those businesses on the north side of Main Street are, are, are having some form of access, signage and what have you. What's going on? Yeah, there, there was, you know, there's signage, uh, noticing, uh, you know, make sure that the businesses know so they, you know, if they're using social media or things like that, they can let their customers know. We, uh, our public information officer has also been putting out information about, uh, you know, the closures uh, along Main Street as well. Okay, just as long okay. as we stay on top of it. Yep, I think it will. I drive that quite a bit. It looked like they're doing that. Yep. So, Also, I just want to add, I should have added in the announcements on Wednesday evening, I've been invited to receive a thank you from the Home Builders, the H, we call it Home by Ed, the High School Home Builders oh. Group. Yeah. They're having their banquet Wednesday night, and, and they want to thank us for all that we continue to do for their... Uh, their course, and in the bigger picture, being somewhat of a um, involved in housing in various fashions, those skills that they're putting out at this high school are tremendously important for our community. I, I can't tell you how important it is to have framers and drywallers and knowledgeable young people that go through there and are, and are work ready. They can come right out and go to work. That is a very impressive group of people. 
So the house that you. they're doing is right down the street from me, and it it's been really neat to watch it go yeah. up. And it's yeah. it looks like it's going to be a beautiful house, and I can't wait to see the finished product. And they're they're close, yeah. so yeah, they, they've mm -hmm. got to get it finished this week typically. Well, this yeah, just from my position, those homes even on a resale are tremendous asset. They're very well constructed, and they sell really well because people know that that organization does an outstanding house. And it's, uh, it's really a thrill to know that those people, those kids coming out of high school, male and female, can go right into the workforce right now. That's an extremely positive thing for our community. Anything else for the good of the council? None, then we're adjourned.